Welcome to another edition of Play Branson. My name is Chris Meyer, and I'm here with Haley Westrich. Haley, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Man, good. it's summertime, and I, know. I tell you, it's going quickly. That it is, but there's so many exciting things going on in town. There are, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but yes. we've kind of started this new feature in June, and it's called either dumb questions or things that make you go, hmm. It's going to be pretty fun. So I'm going to give you some, and we're just going to get people, you know, there's enough bad news out there, and so I, sometimes people need to laugh. Absolutely. So here's my questions. Okay. Um, if man evolved from apes, why do we still have apes? That's from Dennis Miller. That's good. Yeah. Uh, you know, good question. Mm -hmm. Why do you need an appointment to see a psychic? Because you wouldn't really need one. You wouldn't. No. They, they should know. They should. Uh, right? <laughs> um, why? <laughs> he finally got that. Yeah, yeah that's I saw hilarious. It. Um, <laughs> why doesn't glue stick to the inside of a bottle? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay, here's another good one. Why doesn't Tarzan have a beard? That's, that's I mean, you know, he, 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 how does he shave? Okay, here's my last one. I think this is pretty funny. If you choke a Smurf, what color does it turn? It's already blue, it's so it's got to turn purple, purple or something. Red? I Red. don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, those are our funny <laughs> questions or things that make you think. Okay, now, this is a, this is a good question, but it's, it's kind of a serious question. Okay. If you could have one superpower... What would you choose? Hmm. I'd have to say super speed, just so you can get like everywhere super fast. Everywhere super fast. Yes. Okay. Um, How about you? I'm trying to think. If I had a superpower, um, I don't. I kind of like to fly. That would be I fun. I think that would be fun. Mm -hmm. You know. So anyway, those are our fun opening questions. Um, if you like those, let us know on Facebook. If you don't, let us know on Facebook as well. Um, and so it's summer. We've got a lot going on. A lot of new stuff in Branson this summer. We do. Bigfoot just opened. You've got Fritz's Adventure. And then, of course, you got the tracks with the bumper boats and the go-karts, which are always fun for the families. And then the Branson roller coaster, another roller another coaster. Another one, So yeah. we're going to have two roller coasters yes. in Branson. So um, lots to, for the family to do, besides all right. the other things that have already been out there, with the, whether it's the lake, Silver Dollar City, uh, lots of things going on. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about new, oh, my gosh, that was crazy. <laughs> um, when we talk about new, people are like going, what is, what's going on on the video? Um, we have a new show in Branson. We yes. have several new shows, mm -hmm. but the entertainer that's coming up has a new show. Absolutely. She's been out on the showboat and has her very own show this season. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so we're going to be talking to Janice Martin here uh, when we come back from the break. And uh, stick with us and we'll be back real soon. The Platinum Award-winning Comfort Inn & Suites, Branson Meadows, features a unique mountain lodge theme with amazing views of the Ozark Mountains. The guest rooms are spectacular with over 30 suites. Cool off in the refreshing indoor pool and hot tub or enjoy free hot breakfast every day. For more information or to make reservations, call 877-7-HOTELS. Welcome back. Uh, I am here today with uh, Janice Martin, and I'm uh, very excited to have Janice here today. Um, I've seen her perform, but really haven't got to know her or meet her, so it's going to be a great opportunity to get to know you, Janice. It's good to have you on the show. Thank you. And so, so to be here. you've been in Branson quite a long time now. I have. It's been six years at the showboat, and now this is my seventh year. Yeah, seven years. So mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit about your history and your background and just how you even got to Branson. Well, I originated in Racine, Wisconsin. My dad's a preacher. He was a preacher at a church there, and I uh, started violin and piano pretty young. Mm -hmm. Two older sisters, we all played. Um, I did my schooling. I went to Juilliard School. Uh, following that, I went to the Army. It's kind of an unusual uh, path, but I did three years. I did my basic training uh, in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Oh, wow. That was my first introduction to Missouri. And then afterwards, I was stationed in Washington, D.C., so I played violin in the Army Band, uh, the just doing various things for like the White House, State Department, and things like that. And then I launched a career uh, starting with the Carnegie Hall debut, and I was going to be a classical violinist, and I just couldn't quite find my soul there because I love <laughs> all these different kinds of styles of music Kay. and being a pianist and a singer. I well, I just had to expand my wings. So I've been doing shows and developing them for a while. 
And then uh, Silver Dollar City invited me to come for World Fest, and Showboat saw me there and invited me to be there at the Showboat. So I've had a really wonderful run there, and I decided it was time to do my own show again. So I'm here at the Americana Theater now. So you have a uniqueness because you're the things I've read on the internet say you're the world's only acrobat aerial violinist. Yes. That's a, that's kind <laughs> of a that's a long word there, but yeah, but that's 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 interesting. So tell us tell us a little bit about that. Well, what's kind of interesting is there's no cables, so I'm not like suspended in the air and playing. I actually love acrobatic work uh, using aerial silks or trapeze or th they call it a lira, which is a hoop. Uh, so I do actual acrobatics, and I figured out a way to have a violin with me, and so I make it sort of a combination of a musical performance and an actual dance. So I've, I've played all over. In fact, I'm just about to perform with the Boston Pops, mm. uh, performing both on silks and also my own hoop that I've had made. And, um, you know, and I've involved this in different kinds of shows from all over the place. And, yeah, I, things like America's Got Talent and things like that. Okay. So speaking of that, tell us a little bit about your experience with America's Got Talent. Well, uh, I had a fantastic uh, audition. It went really well. They loved it. I got a standing ovation. Mm -hmm. And then the producers cut me from the show. So I'm not really <laughs> sure why that <laughs> happened. But it was an amazing experience. And, uh you know, I was uh, in Los Angeles and performing for that. Awesome. And so I got to do what I do. So how do, you, how do you even get to the point where you're doing all this stuff in the air? I mean, like, how did that even happen? Well, you know, I, this, it actually comes from an injury. When I was going to school, I got tendonitis in both arms. And I couldn't, I'm a pianist, and I, I couldn't play piano or violin. So I studied voice, and I was going to be a singer. Uh, actually, I was studying opera <laughs> at the time, and uh, so I just realized that I couldn't leave my violin and piano alone because I love it, mm. and it's kind of my personality. So I decided that I would just uh, kind of get myself therapy and, and work it out, and then that kind of grew into a love of how the body works, and I got really involved in dance and took the gymnastics that I had studied when I was a little girl just a lot more of a step further and um, then I was trying to figure out how to dance and play violin at the same time because I thought that was kind <laughs> of interesting and I spent most of my time rolling around on the floor doing splits and things like that so I found I went to a Cirque du Soleil show and saw an aerial act and it was so beautiful and I had such an emotional reaction to it I mean I literally had tears in my eyes mm -hmm. and I thought well I guess this is what I have to do so I uh, enrolled in a mm. trapeze school <laughs> in New York City, like as soon as I got back from Las Vegas on that trip, and the rest is history. Wow. And then, of course, in Vegas, there almost every casino has a Cirque du Soleil show, and they're amazing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. unbelievable shows, very creative. Very inspiring. Yeah, they're really good. Um, you've also written a book. Mm -hmm. Talk to us just for a moment about that. Well, I'm sort of an a inspirational book. Um, I you know, lover. I just really love having books that are around that encourage you to do things and conquer fears that you've got and so forth. So I decided to write my own book that was geared towards probably younger girls, but also younger boys as well, about my experience overcoming my fear of heights, which was a real truth. I, I uh, grew up, you know, had some injuries and was just afraid to climb. And um, when I was in basic training, I had to do what any person who's been through basic training knows about, which is called the confidence course. And you do through a bunch of scary training exercises. And I had to climb this 30-foot ladder wow. and then come down on a rope. And <laughs> well, when you've got a cavalier and you've got, you know, your canteens filled with water and heavy boots and all these things on, and you've got to hoist your legs up there and come down, it. At 30 feet in the air, it seems like the scariest thing in the world to do. So when I did it and I lived, well, it changed my life, quite wow. literally. Wow. And I've never forgotten that. And I decided to write a book about that experience and how, you know, one thing after letter to another. And I ended up becoming an aerial violinist after conquering those fears. That's awesome, man. Um, this is going to be a good stop for us to take a quick break and uh, watch this video. And we'll be back in just a moment.
You don't want to miss the all-new Janice Martin Cirque Show, a magical, musical, and aerial extravaganza. Now at the Americana Theater, the world's only aerial violinist as seen on the showboat Branson Bell, the magical piano playing of Dr. Wickfield, rising country star Dakota Rose, lovable comedian Hugh Heffer, and more. Laugh until your sides hurt and tap your toes to your favorite songs, backed up with incredible special effects. Purchase your tickets today for the Janice Martin Cirque Show. Welcome back to Play Branson. We're here with Janice Martin today talking about her and her new show in Branson. So Janice, tell us just a little bit about your show this season. Well, it's an all new Janice Martin Cirque show, a magical musical and aerial extravaganza show. <laughs> it has a lot in it. We have even a flying piano. Of course, I'm flying in the air with my violin, right. and we have a virtuoso pianist, Dr. Wickfield, who, as I said, flies in the air with his piano <laughs> and plays a bunch of other things. Very We've cool. got Hugh Heffer, not to be confused with the low-down playboy from Illinois. He's the down-home plowboy from Tennessee. <laughs> we've got Dakota Rose, she's a rising country star, and we've got Iris, who's a pop singer, and she's, well, she loves pink. And we have Cat Girl, she was changed into Cat Girl from Smokey the Cat by mm -hmm. Dr. Wickfield, and we have even a marionette who is, uh, actually ends up singing opera, and she does a little aerial act as well in, in a hoop. Now, so all these different characters are actually played by you, correct? Well, don't tell anyone that. Oh. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> well, you know, some people actually don't realize that it's me until a ways into it. But uh, I think a lot of people are, are intrigued by how, how I'm able to pull it all off. And they're, um, well, you know, it's, I find it enormously fun to do the whole thing. So you, you've overcome a lot of things in your past from the last segment. And so really, you know, playing six, you said six years out at the showboat, right? Mm -hmm. Going to your own show, that's a pretty big step because it's a whole different world out there when you do that, right? Well, yeah, I realized that I really have to kind of show my producer uh, abilities, not only just being a performer. Luckily, I have experience doing it because uh, before I came to Branson at the showboat, I was producing my own show. Um, in fact, actually, uh, about two years ago in China, I did my own show, and I'm about to bring it again in this coming January. So I've been doing, you know, renditions mm -hmm. of my own show. I've I've toured a lot, you know, with a five-piece band, and and ver and plus also I do a, a kind of a one-woman show with symphony orchestras, so I have been developing this. But you're right, going to my own show in a theater, well, that's a whole new ball game, and yeah. it's been a really exciting challenge. Yeah, good, good. Hey, so, what's down. your favorite character to, to portray? My favorite character, oh, <laughs> well, you know, it's kind of whatever I'm playing at the moment. Sure. <laughs> I love all of them. Right. I really do. That's yeah. and I, I guess if I'm really honest, they're all little parts of me. Perfect. So tell folks when the show is, because I know you're you're several days a week, obviously, but we're what days are those? We're doing generally four shows a week. Monday, Tuesday, Saturday at two, and Thursday mornings at ten. You do have to check the calendar because there are uh, just a few run out dates that I have, like I'm about to perform with the Boston Pops Orchestra, which I'm very excited about, uh, June second and third. So that weekend I won't be there, and then the following weekend I'm also performing with the San Antonio Symphony. Wow. So. Um, so as I said, there's a few random dates where we're where it's not consistently that. So check our website, JaniceMartinShow.com as well, and um, that gives the calendar. Or I think it's actually on your website. Yes. Well, we have uh, we we always encourage people if they're buying tickets <laughs> to go to iBranson.com, and uh, they can they can do it there as well. As there's lots of websites in town, they probably can check out and see. Um, we really appreciate you being here today, and it, the time always goes so fast because I feel like we've just like touched the iceberg, uh, the tip of the iceberg, and getting oh, to know you, you better. Well, thank and, you. And uh, and so I hope to get to know you more and have you come back and, and share more with us. Well, in the I future. do too, and please come see our show. Yeah, we'd, we'd love, love to do to that. Have you there. Love to do that. So in Branson, what's coming up here in the next week or two? Uh, on June 23rd, we have Bill Anderson and Mo Bandy out at the Welk Resort. If you've been around Branson for a while, you know that Mo Bandy had his own theater in Branson and now does make uh, appearances yearly here still in Branson. And then on June 30th, we have another great country singer, Trace Atkins, will also be at the Welk Theater out at the Welk Resort. Folks, if, you, if you're still watching and you go to facebook.com forward slash play Branson, 
and you're one of the first five people to like and share us, we'll give you some free Chick-fil-A. Everybody loves free Chick-fil-A. And if you're planning your vacation, go to ibranson.com or call 1-877-ENTERTAIN, and they can help you plan your entire vacation. Thanks for watching Play Branson, and until next time, have a great week. Thank you.